الحمد لله عز واقتدر وخلق وجبر وجاد على عبده بنعمة البصر أحمده وأشكره وقد تذأذن للزيادة لمن شكر وأتوب إليه وأستغفره راجيا أن يرشدني وإياكم إلى الذوق والنظر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد البشر أوتي حديد البصر في الدنيا ويوم العرض الأكبر صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الأطهر فالأطهر والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان ما اتصلت عين بنظر أو أذن بخبر أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفلم يسيروا في الأرض فتكون لهم قلوب يعقلون بها أو آذان يسمعون بها فإنها لا تعمل أبصار ولكن تعمل قلوب التي في الصدور Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran these people or have these people walked, traveled through the land with hearts to understand, to perceive, to reason and ears to hear, to listen. Indeed, it is not their eyes that are blind but the hearts within the chests. In our modern age, in this technological age, we became unfortunately addicted to our screens. Scrolling up and scrolling down became the modern way of doing tasbih, unfortunately. The string of beats became replaced by threads from various apps, various phones. Scrutinizing every single image and video on our screens became our way of tadabbur, of tafakkur, contemplation, wonder. Subhanallah. It is definitely one of the most difficult times in history. A time where we lost the compass of good and evil. Where we lost even a way how to use our senses. Which sense to privilege? What does it mean to have senses? A time where we even tend to forget as Muslims that every single one of these senses will be shahidun alayna. It will testify against us on the day of judgment. So this practice of scrolling up, scrolling down, zooming in, zooming out, well, the ears, the eyes, the skin of our fingers is not ours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fussilat, حتى إذا ما جاءوها شهد عليهم سمعهم وأبصارهم وجلودهم بما كانوا يعملون When they will achieve it, when they will reach it, the ears, their eyes, their skins will testify against them for their misdeeds. So it's not an easy thing. It's not something that we can take for granted. But the sense that we use extensively today is definitely the sight. Our eyes became the main tool through which we see the world. It became our main epistemological source. The vision is overshadowing, is privilege compared to other types of perception. We became ocular centric. And this is not easy. It's difficult. It's something that we need to ponder upon. In this regard, we know the health issues that we can have from using extensively our screens. 
We know, I think everyone here knows, probably maybe everyone here have experienced that. You know, dry eyes, blurred vision, back problems, neck and shoulder problems, headache, you name it, the list is very long. Doctors refer often to it as the computer vision syndrome or the digital eye strain, whatever. We know that it has a huge impact on our health. But what about the impacts on our heart? What about the impacts on our, the inner state of our being? Yes, our eyes might get affected, they might get blind. But it is not the eyes that go blind, it's the hearts in the chest, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. So what to do? Being overly exposed to screens and to this visual media is a real obstacle to nurture, to, to cultivate an inner reflection, an inner transformation. It is a real obstacle. And if we add to it all the images that we see every day in the street and advertisements and markets and schools and in our workplaces, then we potentially, well, it's not potentially, certainly, we are seeing more images per day than what people used to see in their entire life. What our ulama and the pre-modern Muslims used to see in their entire life. It's a huge change. And this is something that, again, we need to care about. But interestingly and ironically, we tend to even increase our use of screens during Ramadan for whatever reasons, it might be good or bad reasons, yani, whether good or bad images, the fact is that we increase our exposure to screens. In our tradition, one of the first things that as students of knowledge, a talib al-ilm, seekers of truth, of haqq, receive from their teachers, and this was the case for pretty much all madrasas throughout the history of our Islamic civilization. The first rule is eat less. Sleep less, talk less, and socialize less. And Ramadan, subhanAllah, is conducive to all these. Eat less because of the nature of fasting. Sleep less because we are supposed to wake up for tahajjud and qiyam and ibadat. And talk less because we have to be careful about how we use our, do our tongue. Our tongue can lead us to all sorts of dangers and Illnesses that can even break our fast, like biting and others. As the Arab used to say, Lisani Asadun in Taraktuhu Akalani. My tongue is a lion. If I free him, he will eat me. And then socialize less. Socialize less. I think it's obvious in Ramadan through practices of ihtikaf and khalwa and seclusion. But I think we need to add another rule to this list in our modern way of experiencing Ramadan and life in general, which is screenless. Screenless, like food and drink, we need to fast also from the distractions and the illusion of the world where we live in today. And definitely the screens and the excessive exposure to screens is one of them. Because this ex excessive exposure is experience, like it's influencing even the experience of fasting itself. In general, it will lead to a loss of depth and meaning and this is the nature of how to be exposed to the screen in the first place when you are facing the screen you're not seeing the world you're seeing a representation of it so reality is in fact a list of hyper real realities distorted realities superficial realities and in this sense we can't undertake a deep intense spiritual journey through it it impacts also like our perception of the world. We will focus and we will tend to focus on the physical aspects of the world, the material aspect, even in our ibadat. Our tradition is a tradition of forms, yani, no doubt. No one can deny that. But it is also a tradition of meaning. It's a tradition of praxis and outward practices, but also a tradition of imbibing and embodying those forms. So when the Prophet ﷺ, for instance, said, Sallu kama usalli, Pray as you have seen me praying, 
Well, we are not supposed only to see with our basal the outward movements of the Prophet ﷺ, which are important, otherwise we would not know how to pray. I mean, this is a central element of fiqh. But we are also supposed to see with our basira the inner state of the Prophet ﷺ during prayer. Otherwise, what is Salat? Salat is a sila, it's a link, it's a connection, it's a, an alliance, it's a, it's a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the moment. If the qalb is blind during that moment, then hmm. It is not the eyes that go blind, but the hearts in the chest or within the chest. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الكريم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد المصطفى أصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا screenless is not directed only to يعني in general to others but mainly also to parents especially parents with toddlers given the screen to children of that age is quite dangerous can lead to difficulties it can lead to a loss of attention and concentration span it can lead to a difficulty to focus on tasks and how we can undertake a spiritual journey if we don't if we can't concentrate if we can't focus if we can't be attentive you can't be present in the moment it is dangerous the exposure and excessive exposure to blue light can impact their sleep both يعني, falling asleep and staying asleep. So screenless can reduce levels of anxiety and depression and loneliness. And this is without talking, of course, if they are exposed to stressful and violent content that might lead to all sorts of disastrous stress disorders and imprained cognitive issues and, and other things. So. And we need to think not just twice, seven times before giving our screens to, to kids. It's a, it's a difficult thing from a Shari perspective. But of course, each one of us has its own circumstances, but we need to reach that user first. We need to do our best because it's our responsibility, especially in this modern age. As uh, one of my scholars told me one day, in this age, if we succeed to keep just the humanity of our kids, then we would achieve everything. So we need to be careful. And this is not impacting, of course, just like toddlers, but also teenagers. TikTok, apparently, is becoming among teenagers the most, the most important searching tool. So it's overcoming Google, which is interesting. I don't know how they do that because it's based on short videos search. So, Ajib. Teenagers, according to study, are spending more than seven hours on their screens for entertainment purposes. But this is a reflection of us, of adults. It's our responsibility. Specsavers, the British company, is reporting that 45% of adults in the UK have experienced all symptoms of the digital eye strain. All symptoms, yani dry eyes, blurred vision, 
everything. This is us. So before talking to our kids, we need to focus on ourselves. And we need to show the example. And Ramadan is definitely the best time, the best moment to show that example. And inshallah, after Ramadan. But we need to try that, to screen less. Because otherwise, we can't achieve a meaningful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on a superficial imagery. It needs profound, intense, deep, inner transformation. And that cannot happen with a blind heart. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It is not the eyes that are blind, but the hearts in the chest. اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا وقلبا بصيرا خاشعا وجسما على البلاء صابرا يا بصير اللهم هب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم أعنا في هذا الشهر المبارك الكريم على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر نقوم فيها على الوجه الذي ترضى به عنا اللهم أكرمنا وأكرم نزلنا وأعتق رقابنا في هذا الشهر يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ربي تب عليهم واشفهم وعافهم يا رب الناس أذهب الباس اشف أنت الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقما اللهم بارك لنا في أبنائنا وأنبتهم نباتا حسنا اللهم اجعلهم يحبونك ويطيعونك ويعينوننا على حبك وطاعتك اللهم واحشرنا في زمرة وجوه ناظرة إلى ربها ناظرة واحشرنا في زمرة سيد الخلق سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغرق الخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزيدكم ولذكر الله أعلى وأتم وأجل وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون السلام عليكم this Ramadan we're offering you the chance to have your own piece of Cambridge Central Mosque in your own home. Beautifully framed original brick from our award-winning building with an engraved plaque featuring a name of your choice. This is available to the first 300 of you taking advantage of our unique automated system to donate day by day this Ramadan so you can maximize the blessing of each day of this special month, inshallah. I'll be personally presenting this rare gift to you at an in-person ceremony right after Ramadan. Remember the Holy Prophet وسلم, said, the most beloved of deeds to Allah are those that are consistent, even if small. So this month, let's fast, pray, recite Quran and donate day by day. <laughs>